Hello guys, welcome back. My name is Nathan and today I'm going to be discussing five different buyers and sellers at this year's NHL trade deadline. Now we're just a few weeks away from the 2020 trade deadline in the NHL and there's a lot of teams that are in the buying, selling, and just plain not doing anything section. But today I'm going to highlight some of the teams that might not be so obvious in both the buying and the selling tiers. So which teams do I see being the biggest buyers, sellers, and the biggest teams in between? Watch till the end for all my picks and opinions and of course subscribe if you're new. Now, this year's NHL trade deadline is lining up to be an insane one. Just a couple weeks ago, there was a one-point difference between 8th overall in the standings and 18th overall in the standings. And I think this trade deadline will reflect the desperation that is in a lot of teams right now. I didn't want to just go over the obvious teams, though, for the buyers and sellers. You obviously have the buyers in Boston, St. Louis, Colorado that are obvious picks for the sellers. You have the Devils, Sens, and teams like the Red Wings. I didn't want to just have this video be an obvious one that you guys already know what the teams are. So for today, I have five different buyers and five different sellers who I think will be a lot more interesting at this trade deadline and a lot more active. But we're going to end up switching from buyer to seller to buyer to seller and so on and so forth in this video. But starting us out here today with my first buyer, who I think will be fascinating at this year's deadline, I have the Edmonton Oilers. Now the Oilers at this year's deadline will have $5.8 million, some pretty good cap space for them that they haven't really had. But for a team like Edmonton, who's in the playoff race, obviously with Connor McDavid, every single year counts. And I think they'll use this year as a year to really push for the playoffs and not just for the first round, but to make a deep playoff run. But for a team like Edmonton, even though they are still in the playoff race, there are still the same storylines that are continuing from past years where they ended up missing. Still, there is a big lack of depth. Even though a guy like James Neal has been a revelation for them, they still do need a lot of depth on the wing that just has not been there so far. And also maybe an extra defense piece, especially maybe in the top six, I think could help them pretty well. And going from our first buyer in the Edmonton Oilers to our first seller team, First, starting out with the Montreal Canadiens. Now, the Habs are, to be honest, in a really weird position. Currently sitting at a 22-22-7 and record, they are a lot out of the playoffs right now, and it's very, very unlikely that they'll even be in the playoff race at this point. But they have some nice pieces that I think will be a great fit for them. Guys like Jeff Petrie and Ilya Kovalchuk, who could get a lot of stuff back for Montreal. Now, to me, the main three pieces for Montreal are Jeff Petrie, Tomas Sitar, and Ilya Kovalchuk. All three of those guys I could realistically see going off of Montreal and being big pieces at this trade deadline. But Montreal right now, even with those guys in the books, has $17 million to work with. They could be a team that not just sells, but brings in big contracts too to get as much as possible. Personally, that's what I would do with Montreal. I would go with guys like that, get the most back, and for a team like Montreal, who already has a great chance chance at Alexi Lafreniere, getting as many first round picks in a draft like this is probably the smartest move for them, especially at this point. But going from my first seller in the Montreal Canadiens to my second buying team, that being the Columbus Blue Jackets. Now, the Columbus Blue Jackets at the deadline will have $31 million in cap space. They pretty much have cap space to do anything at this point. Columbus is a team, though, that I think will either stay pat or could end up making some big moves. I don't think they're going to go after a guy like Chris Kreider, but I think some depth options would help them quite a bit. Right now, though, this is a Columbus team that is very hot as is. I don't think there's much tinkering that needs to be made and I really don't think they'll trade their first round pick either. We obviously saw how last year went with Columbus, how they swept the Tampa Bay Lightning and went all four at the deadline, traded basically all their picks and prospects. To me right now, Liam Foody is really the only guy in that prospect pool, especially for Emil Bemstrom graduating this year. That is really a highlight in that pool right now. And I think Columbus would definitely keep that first round pick if they could. But I think getting some depth options, especially at that forward group, could be a big help for them. Columbus right now is a big sleeper team, and especially if the goaltending and Elvis and Jonas Corpusello continues to be great, that's a team that could surprise a lot of people like they did last season. And now going from my second buyer to my second seller, this one being a little bit hot takey, but I still have the Winnipeg Jets. To me, the Winnipeg Jets are one of those teams that some people might expect to go up and buy a ton this season, but that's a team that I think with the inconsistencies they've had, 
I really don't see the Winnipeg Jets being all that bombastic this trade deadline and really going after it. Right now, Winnipeg sits with a 25, 22, and 4 record, three points out of the playoffs, and currently with a four game losing streak. That's a team that, with the way it's played so far, I personally wouldn't bet on to make the playoffs anyways. And also, Murat Eights of The Athletic, who covers Winnipeg Jets full-time, just put out a whole article, a huge one explaining why the Winnipeg Jets should sell this trade deadline. So if you don't believe me, believe him. But now, getting into my third seller at this year's NHL trade deadline, I have the Arizona Coyotes. Now, the Coyotes are a team with not that much cap space, currently with 300 k at this year's deadline. But for a team that has not played amazingly since Taylor Hall came in, that's a team that even though they got Taylor Hall, I still think will make a lot of different moves. Now, the Coyotes are by no means guaranteed a playoff spot. Currently tied with 57 points with three other teams in the Pacific, they could be fifth in the Pacific as soon as tomorrow tomorrow if it didn't go their way. And obviously the goaltending injuries have been a big part of that. Ranta and Kemper are still out. Once those guys come in, I think it will be much more smooth. But for a team like Arizona, I think there is still moves to be made. Even on the defense, the offense needs some work, especially depth-wise, where they can use some extra firepower. I'm not sure if Arizona will go for another big guy in Taylor Hall, but I think some more moves will 100% happen. But now going to my third seller at this year's trade deadline, I'm going to go with the Chicago Blackhawks. Now the Chicago Blackhawks are pretty much the polar opposite of maybe the Columbus Blue Jacket situation where they're kind of in the middle area. They could end up doing nothing but end up selling if they want to. But Chicago is a team with a lot of options at this point. They've been roaring in the past few weeks, being a lot better than they started out. And that's a team that has a lot of different pieces they could trade too. I mean, we look at both goalies that they have, Robin Leonard and Corey Crawford, who have both both been heavily rumored, especially in the past couple of months. Now, for a team like Chicago, I wouldn't be entirely surprised if they ended up standing pat, but that's a team that I think could use an extra boost in the prospects and the picks. Two guys I look towards to be the big piece for Chicago being moved is Brandon Sod and Eric Gustafson. Sod having a pretty good year, Gustafson pretty much the opposite, but two guys that hold some pretty good value on the market. But I think for a team like Chicago, no matter what they end up doing, they pretty much win in this situation. They got a rebuild going right now with some good prospects and picks coming up, but they also have a team that's contending for the playoffs that has played very well up to this point. But either way, they have a lot of options and right now, a lot of cap space. And now going on to my fourth buyer at this year's trade deadline, I'm going to go with these guys, the Philadelphia Flyers. Now the Flyers are in a unique position here because they're in the playoff race. Their spot is not guaranteed though, and they could definitely use some extra firepower. Right now they'll set at a $2.8 million cap hit hanging into the trade deadline and an extra forward who could bring some depth scoring is the number one priority. Now, I think the perfect fit to go back to other teams in a forward deal would be Shane Goss' spare, but obviously with that big cap hit, it's easier said than done. I think he still has some value, but I think for a team like Philly, that forward that can bring in some extra depth and extra scoring is pretty much just the only thing they need at this point. If they get a guy like Carter Hart going back again, I think the defense is set, it's great to go, but that offense could use some tinkering. Right now, I think depth is the way Philly will go, but they'll still be very, very active, especially in trade negotiations in the next month. And now on to my fourth seller at this year's trade deadline. I'm going to go with the San Jose Sharks. Now the San Jose Sharks at this point are not going to make the playoffs and it's pretty much been confirmed at this point. They are officially eliminated, but they're pretty much eliminated. That's a team that could use a rebuild, and this might be the wake-up slap they need. Right now, they'll have $4 million going into the deadline, and I think we'll use that quite well. I think everybody pretty much is on the table besides guys like Tomas Hurdle, Meyer, and maybe even Eric Carlson, but I think a lot of that team is available. I wouldn't be surprised to see guys like Joe Thornton, Patrick Marlowe, you know, guys who are a core part of that teams end up going away to other teams because I think at this point San Jose is desperate for a first round pick and desperate for any optimism. And now we're getting into my fifth buyer at this year's deadline. And this is one of the more obvious ones, but I felt I still need to mention it. That being the Vancouver Canucks. Now the Canucks will have $2.8 million in cap space at this deadline. And I think we'll make some decent moves. For a team like Vancouver, I don't see them being, again, one of those teams that makes a big one going after a guy like Chris Kreider. But that's a team that could use some depth both on the offense and on D. 
Now, for this Vancouver team, I could still realistically see them not doing too much because right now they're obviously playing pretty well. Currently sitting at a 28-18-4 record, good for first in the Pacific Division, three points above anybody at this point. But I still think that's a team that could use some more playoff experience when you look at their true leaders in Bo Horvat, Elias Pedersen, Quinn Hughes. There's not much playoff experience to go around. But that's a team that I think could use some extra bolstering strength on that forward group and even on that defense. But now getting into the last team I'll mention in this video, for my fifth seller at this year's NHL trade deadline, I have the New York Rangers. Now I hesitate to call them a seller because New York will be one of the most interesting teams at this deadline. They obviously have maybe the best piece at this deadline, that being Chris Kreider, who they've yet to have really all that many negotiations with up to this point. But they also have Ryan Strom, Tony D'Angelo, uh, Alexander Georgia, potentially Henrik Lundqvist in play. That's a team that could have a lot of different pieces moved at this deadline and could make a lot of different changes. Now, for a team like New York, their playoff chances are going down every single day. Right now, they are 10 points behind the 6th place Metro team in the Philadelphia Flyers, who currently sit with 60 points in 50 games thus far. That's not exactly a recipe for success, and for me personally, I would end up selling at this deadline, which I think is what the New York Rangers will eventually do. I think Chris Kreider is going to eventually be traded, even though New York has had negotiations with him that hasn't really been all that confirmed, and it doesn't seem like they're having actually serious negotiations. That's a player that I think will be traded alongside Alexander Georgiev and potentially a mixture of Ryan Strom and Tony D'Angelo. I personally would keep D'Angelo, me, even Ryan Strom, but that's a team that could sell off a lot of different assets. And even if they do end up doing that, I wouldn't be surprised. For a team like New York, though, they have a lot of different options. They could stand pad this deadline or end up selling. But that's a team that if I'm going to keep an eye on anyone, that's the team I'll be most interested to watch this trade deadline to see what they end up doing. But that'll be it for today's video, boys. If you guys enjoyed this one, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that notification bell if you haven't already. Comment down below your thoughts on my picks, both for the sellers and the buyers and what you guys agree with. Let me know down in the comments down below which teams you think will buy and sell this deadline. Of course, click on this playlist right here to watch all of my trade deadline videos. Share this video with your friends, boys. Get the buyers and sellers out there as well. My name is Nathan and I'll see y'all next video or stream. Goodbye.